today we're going to be answering that age-old question of if avoidance feel guilt. And in short, yes, avoidance can feel guilt, but it's often warped and used in ways that are unhealthy. More on that in a minute. After spending the better part of a few hours researching this topic, I've come to the conclusion that any discussion of guilt and avoidant turns into philosophical discussions on proper coping mechanisms. So I'd like to have an open discussion based on attachment style research around guilt, which will require me to dive into some potentially uncomfortable topics like defining avoidant behavior or an avoidance inability to properly process guilt and an avoidance need to thrive on guilt, which in and of itself is a contradiction, which makes it kind of interesting. So let's just jump right in. Now, what should be a seemingly simple practice of defining avoidant behavior is actually a lot more complicated than you can imagine due to the fact that there are really two types of avoidance. There are the dismissive avoidance and the fearful avoidance. And one is definitely more prone to guilt than the other one on the outset of a breakup. It's best to view the two different type of attachment styles as being placed on a spectrum. So on one side of the spectrum, you have incredibly anxious behaviors, you know, insecurity of being abandoned, needing, needing constant reassurance, trying to fix an unfixable problem in a relationship, being jealous when a partner spends more time with someone else than with you. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have incredibly avoidant behaviors, which is stuff like constantly thinking your independence is being threatened by your partner, um, being super self-reliant in life, downplaying the importance of relationships, not talking about your feelings, not believing that you need help in relationships. Now, the dismissive avoidant falls pretty much on the avoidance side of the spectrum, meaning they're going to exhibit those extreme avoidant behaviors. The fearful avoidant, on the other hand, is going to bounce like a ball between one spectrum to the next. So one minute, they're anxious, the next they're avoidant, the next they're anxious and avoidant and anxious and avoidant. And this creates kind of an interesting problem. Does one type of avoidant attachment style feel guilt more than the other one? Well, here's where I land on it. I think both attachment styles feel guilt, but the fearful avoidant is going to be a little bit more outward about it, meaning the dismissive will internalize and almost use it to perpetuate their torment. Whereas the fearful is going to be outward about their guilt. They're, you're going to see more ready signs from them. So for our purposes, I'd actually like to dive a bit into how dismissives handle guilt. Because for many of you watching this, this is probably the kind of partner you're upset about or trying to figure things out about because they're not being verbal with how they're feeling. They're internalizing everything. So one thing you need to understand about dismissive avoidance is that they don't properly process guilt. Now, I'm often talking about the avoidant relationship death wheel, which essentially is the life cycle of a relationship from an avoidant perspective, and it really becomes relevant to this discussion. So essentially what you're seeing on the screen right now is the life cycle of a relationship for the average dismissive avoidant. And really fearful avoidant, but fearful avoidance a little bit more roller coastery about it. Now there are eight main stages to it. You know, the avoidant starts out wanting someone to love them. They find you, believe their troubles are over. Then they find some worrying things. They use that worrying thing to begin to think about leaving. Then they actually leave the relationship. Then they're happy they left the relationship. Then they begin to feel lonely. Then they wonder why is this always happening to them, which leads them back to the start of the wheel, and they keep going. But for our purposes. We're actually really only interested in this section, which I have highlighted right here, which is section number eight. Why can't I ever find the right person? You see, what a normal secure individual would do during this stage would be to take stock of what went wrong in the relationship, take ownership on what they can improve on, and then improve it. You are allowed to feel sorry for yourself. You are allowed to feel victimized. You're allowed to feel guilt for any misdeeds you committed throughout the relationship. But where this gets really complicated is when you consider the fact that avoidance often make their lives more complicated by running from guilt. Now, according to one of my favorite avoidant attachment resources, Free to Attach, unable to healthily hold space for their own needs and effectively process guilt with a new person, they once again feel temporarily safe from being overwhelmed by someone else's and so better able to enjoy a connection. Now, I know that seems kind of off, but essentially what this is saying is avoidance really don't have an effective way of processing guilt. 
And I think this is why we see so many avoidance specifically going on the rebound. They believe that the best way to handle guilt is to distract themselves from it, or in some cases, not taking ownership for any mistakes they made. Here's where philosophically this discussion becomes fascinating. Guilt, in an odd way, is about taking ownership. Show me someone who doesn't feel guilty, and I'll show you a person that doesn't think they've done anything wrong. We feel guilty when we know we did something wrong. And yet, so often in our coaching practice, we see clients' exes refusing to take ownership for mistakes that they made. It's much easier to blame another person than to take ownership. And it appears that avoidant individuals are excellent at deflecting blame. Why? Well, it's probably because guilt hurts. Ownership hurts. Remember, avoidance, well, they avoid. And yet this discussion becomes even more nuanced when you consider that in a weird way, an avoidant needs to feel guilt. You know, really what sucks about getting old, besides, you know, your your body breaking down, it's the fact that you're constantly out of the loop on the latest relationship terminology. So in my father's day, dating was called going steady. Now, each generation has their own lingo for relationships. So I felt pretty bad when I found out that pain shopping was a thing. Just a few months ago was the first time I ever had come across the term. I'm getting old. Pain shopping is essentially when you go to look for things to purposefully hurt over. The number one priority for an avoidant after a breakup is to do everything they can to keep that person at an arm's length. They don't want to process their emotions. They don't want to reconcile. They don't want to do anything that threatens this newfound independence. And once again, pulling from free to attach, avoidance is in built in defensiveness and difficulty with the vulnerability of emotional openness also makes them less, less likely to apologize to people they hurt in spite of the guilt they may feel. So guilt is there. And yet in our research on avoidance and how they miss you, we found something almost contradictory. They want someone to love them, but they don't want to let anyone close enough to do so. In other words, in an avoidance mind, the best relationship is a phantom one, a relationship that they can daydream about, but not have the actual fear of a commitment being involved. So their modus operandi is to use guilt as a way of preventing them from getting a commitment. Seems contradictory, right? On the other hand, I make the argument earlier that avoidance want to avoid guilt, and yet here I'm making a contradictory argument that they want to hold on to it. I think as a whole, here's what it amounts to. They don't want to feel the horrible feelings associated with guilt. However, they actually subconsciously recognize guilt as a great way of preventing them from ever getting into a relationship with that person again. So they hold on to it, almost like they're storing it for just the right moment. They pain shop it essentially. It's their currency, their protection from losing their independence. It's the whole iceberg approach. On the surface, they appear normal, but beneath they hold on to that small thread of guilt, knowing it might come in handy, assuming you try to get back together with them. This is why so many of our clients struggle with avoidance. Any fall back into old behavior triggers the trauma of the relationship for an avoidant, and that guilt begins to bubble to the surface, causing them to avoid and they find themselves trapped in a prison of their own making. So to answer your question, yes, avoidance feel guilt, even when it doesn't look like they do. 